And we're back and ready for the tell-all. Welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Root. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? And one of them just shaking his head like you just did. Well, <laughs> yeah, those people. And we've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. 90 Day Fiance Season 9 Couples Tell All Part 1. Just that title alone. <laughs> It's annoying. Season so, nine, couples till all part one. Dumb. Funny part is when you text me, you go, yeah, there is tell all part one and two. I'm like, yeah, that's that's pretty standard. And you just, I could hear, I could hear the aggravation in your text. <laughs> and like it's almost like the like the the letters were just harder on my phone. Like I could feel the vibration as you're texting each letter. <laughs> Why you gotta they gotta drag this out for two weeks? It's just ridiculous. They're tapping into my Sunday preseason. <laughs> it's preseason. Your Saints ain't doing jack anyway. No, they they lost yesterday. So of course they did. But nobody cares about wins and losses in the preseason. So no, I know. I don't. I didn't even watch the game. I just like paid attention to score mobile. I'm like, oh, Jameis wasn't playing. Okay, I don't care anymore. <laughs> just <laughs> <stopped>. <laughs> you actually don't want him to play for the whole season, but you know that's a whole other story. <laughs> well, your boy in books threw an interception. So go no, go fighting Irish. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's what happens when you go to the Saints. Look, <laughs> as we get to the tell-all, you know, one of the things I like about the tell-all is the fact that they kind of give you um, a look at what it, what it's like on the set. They give you a lot of the back the backstory, you know, they show you behind the scenes at the same time, giving you the full show, even the countdown to them starting the show. But the new twist they had this year was Tim and Kenny as tell-all commentators. And so basically it's like watching two shows in one, 90 Day Fiance and Pillow Talk. I'm like, guys. So- who is Tim and Kenny? Because I just saw like these two gay guys come out the blue, and I'm like, who are these people? Okay, let me stop you there. Kenny is gay, and he he moved to Mexico in the other way, um, ninety day the other way. Let me just make sure I clarify that. Uh, <laughs> even his much younger um, lover, right? And because Kenny's actually a grandfather. I mean, I know they say black don't crack, but apparently neither does Kenny. <laughs> so if, if if I was watching the TV. Is it the guy on the right or the guy on the left? If you're watching, t- Kenny is the guy with the blonde spike here. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now, the guy with the weather boots on, um, that was Tim. <laughs> <laughs> He's up them boots up. I'm like, oh, come on, Tim. Don't do this, man. Everything's in question. Because like you said, who are these two gay guys? Everybody thinks Tim is gay. He's actually straight. Right. And he is just very metrosexual. Uh, he was in one of the earlier seasons of 90 Day Fiance. I think I want to say he was dating a Brazilian girl. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Was it Brazilian or Colombian? Somebody correct me down here. Um, beautiful woman, Jennifer. But I remember when she thought that he was going to, you know, all right, let's get it. Let's let's get down. Let's do it. And he was like, let's do facials. <laughs> He's on Pillow Talk. He's hilarious, but yeah, he's got he's got a lot of feminine energy, a lot of estrogen running through Tim. Mm, okay, um, I, I guess seeing the backstory, I get, and again, I've never watched Nine Day Fiance, so I have no nothing to compare it to. Mm-hmm. Um, I have unfortunately seen multiple seasons of Married at First Sight, and so <laughs> what I noticed about this is that Married at First Sight, all the couples are together. Mm-hmm. They're hanging together, the honeymoon together, the the whole deal. What I didn't understand about this show is these couples never met. They don't know each other, and yet they're getting out the car on the way to the show ready to like talk shit. And I'm like, well, I don't understand where this is coming from. Roman you don't even know up. these people. <laughs> yeah, like they're just ready to go at each other. And I'm like, why? Y'all weren't even together. Like I just don't understand again, reality show drama. You know, but here we are talking about it. So But you Think about it. They're watching, like you said, they're watching the show just like we're watching the show, right? And they're watching the episodes, so they're seeing, and they're going to have opinions on each other. So, and that's what happens. And of course, yeah, you do get a little shade in there. You do get people throwing their, themselves in business. They have no business like they, you know, they always say, if you live in a glass house, don't throw so- stones. They all live in glass houses, and they've got boulders. <laughs> <laughs> Well, apparently so, you know, but it, it's, I didn't know what to expect, but I took a lot of good notes because I thought it was hilarious. Well, let's get Probably down to it. Before we get into the couples, I just want to point out, because they didn't really do much with them. 
this episode, we'll get into more of that stuff next, but I got to at least give, um, you know, a round of applause and um, a nice big ups to our guy, Kobe, because, you know, he's out there working his ass off. He is working. He and Emily is staying her lazy ass at home, just like we do. She would, we talked about this and we said this was going to happen. Surprise. I'm going to stay at home, mom. Even if you weren't having kids, you'd be staying at home. Whatever. Don't get me going on Emily. <laughs> well, okay. Let's get to the couples who were the focus of, of part one of the tell all. Let's start with um, Mr. Flashy himself, Jabri and Miona. Um, to hear him in the very beginning, I went, Jabri's an idiot. And he talks like it just because he kept just like, well, you know, because they're all jealous and, you know, when, you, when you're shining, they don't want you to shine. And I'm just like, oh, no, stop it. Well, Kobe said it best when they were kind of having a little break. He's like, I think Jabri is just being Jabri. <laughs> yes. And I think he was. He came out here just being himself. Um, the outfit, like, did you expect anything less from Jabri and what he was going to wear? But I was just, it, 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 I was shocked how Jabri was just ready to just go at shots fired at anybody. He was just ready to jump in and talk about anybody. That whole interaction between him and Ari. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, well, you're the most jealous person or anybody up on here. To, to, well, to be fair, Ari somewhere. jumped in first. She said something first. He's True. Like, True. But then <laughs> Jabri was just going at folks. Didn't matter. I just thought it was hilarious watching him just like pull shots at people. And Miona just sat there just not saying anything, just looking cute. She's like, I got my I got my man and I'm, I, I got his back. But the funny thing was... Uh, after he goes after Ari, Ari tries to joke. Well, just because you just want to look like me. He he looked like he wanted to just say, shut your ugly ass up. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was not here for any games with her. He came at her hard because she said something to him and then he never let up after that. Ari looks like a Cabbage Patch kid that grew up. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's, let's, re- let's re-edit that. Let's, hold on. let's edit that. Let's start that over. I don't know if I want to edit that out. Yeah, let's start that over. No. <laughs> Ari looks like a garbage pail kid that grew up. <laughs> oh, y'all thought he was about to get better, huh? Yeah. You thought he was going to make she it looks nicer. Like, he looks like, she looks like a garbage pail kid that grew up. And so for her to say, you just want to look as good as me, I'm like, uh, please, you need to stop that. Uh, but when he was just going at her, just hit her, talking about her and Benny are not going to work out. Uh, yes. I was just like, get her, Jabri. And he's like, what are you going to do? You're jealous now. When he starts making a million dollars to fight and all these women are mm-hmm. coming to him, what are you going to do then? Exactly. He's like, she's holding you back, bro. <laughs> You're a star. <laughs> You're going to shine. She's holding you back. And Benny's had that look in his face like, you got you not connect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a perfect transition to Ari and Benny because, you know, um, The fact that Benny got his green card now, though, means that he can now use any or all of his 52 skills and abilities to earn for his family. (laughs) I'm just wondering, he's going to have like one business, you know, Benny's gym slash tailoring slash dance. You know, let's give him an idea. Benny does it all. And that's just it. (laughs) Benny's one stop shop. Benny will do it. That's what it's just called. That's the name of it. Benny will do it. You need something done? Call this number. Benny will do it. There you go. See, we got you, Benny. We got you. Yeah. We just all we ask for is a ten percent cut. That's it. Yeah, just you got to put on there. Just ask Ari first in small print. <laughs> the fact that Jabri would not let up on on the um, the whole jealousy and you know and the fact, you, like you said when he brought up y'all ain't gonna work out um, then. They talked about it, asked about the women, and they're like, yeah, is everyone on the show jealous and insecure? And everybody said that, and Kobe, I thought, was the adult in the room, and he was like, um, everyone is jealous. It's just about how you handle your jealousy. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Everyone is jealous. It's all about how you handle, you know, how you handle that. And I think out of everybody on the show, from what we saw from the producers, <laughs> Ari was the worst. <laughs> You know, of all of them, you know, she was ready to go fight a trained MMA 
female fighter who Ooh. is way more fit maybe could have helped her nose look better if she got punched up a couple times. <laughs> but it just was... A, and I feel bad I'm talking about this girl, but it's just like, you made it so easy. And you put yourself on shows. This is your third reality show, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, because they did The Other Way, then they did something yeah. else. And, and, and they did a, I think they did a couple seasons of The Other Way. So, yeah, this, this third yeah. one in the franchise, they're, they're pretty much... And, and I saw what someone said throughout the season, like, it looks like they try, like they didn't have a storyline and they shouldn't have been on, been on this one because there really was no story. They're trying to finish up the story of him actually making it over here, but there's no real storyline. And so they had to create one. And it looks like it when they brought old boy back in, you know. So um, I will say, though, with the whole MMA fighter, Patrick was like, oh, yeah, Thais would have tried to fight her, too. And Thais is like, yes, I would. And I'm like, you would have got your ass beat, too. <laughs> I like how Jabri was like, I'll fight you for $100,000. <laughs> I was like, mm, Jabri, after watching you get beat up by your best friend, that, that was your second loss to him because the first one, he put you in a coma. I don't think you want to fight Benny. Yeah. I, <laughs> Jabri had better learn a whole lot because the fact that you sat on that stage and said, he put me in a coma and then I still went in the band with him and did all this stuff. You, you might. You know. But what I like about Jabri, that is a Picture perfect example of a man who's not scared to take an ass whoop. Yes, because he's taken it already. Mm -hmm. He's been in the hospital once with a coma. He's like, okay, I know, I know my limits. I know what I can't handle. <laughs> so he's just gonna say whatever he wants and doesn't care what anybody thinks. I'm just like, go ahead on Jabri, do you? Jabri's trying to be the Rock. From remember when the Rock was, you know, he was kick everybody. When he was in WWE, kick ass or get his ass kicked. Still come back talking shit, and that's Jabri right now. <laughs> 100%. 100%. I can't wait to see what it's like when David comes on to the next season or next episode. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. Um, Patrick and Thais. Um, I will say this. Uh, Patrick sounds like he was watching the show and he heard you talking about why Thais couldn't do anything. He's like, I got to make all the phone calls. Yada, 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 yada. Uh, yada, 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 yada. Uh, yada, uh, yada, yada. I got to do it. <laughs> But you heard them talking about that at the beginning. It's like it's like having a child <laughs> that they can't do anything. Remember, I said that. Yes. <laughs> they treat these like he's gone children. to the, he's gone to the school of just terror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, well, you know, first off, congratulations to Patrick and Peace and Baby. Indeed. Um, and they moved to Vegas now, which which I'm I'm still wondering, did John move to Vegas, <laughs> or it doesn't sound like it. Well, and I wonder, does Patrick still have the same job? Because his job was in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And he was also doing it in Austin, so it's some type of sales role. And Pat, uh, John was also helping. So I'm wondering, did what happened? I'll, I'll be honest. I don't remember who put it up, whether it was your wet sock or celeb talk guy. But somebody put up the truth behind um, Patrick's security job. And I'm like, hmm, I haven't watched it yet. So I still got to watch it to figure out exactly what it is. But I, there's something in there that obviously he's got people intrigued behind his um behind this job and the fact that he's because like you said he moved twice since we've seen him he lived in austin right next door to you then he moved up the street he's like i gotta get away from this guy and then now he's moved out of texas like i gotta get away from the state and now he's in vegas <laughs> well i don't know what he did but or why he's on the run but there's a story <laughs> it does feel like i it. can't wait to I, I can't wait to hear it but I, I thought it was hilarious that they were together for a year. Yes. And then she says, hey, I think I'm pregnant. He's like, oh, you can't be. I, I can't get anybody pregnant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they've been talking about having kids that whole time. I'm just I'm like, this is so stupid. Yeah. And then he was like, uh, from doing the PEDs, he goes, um, I, I had no sperm. I was like, you're an idiot. Well, Just say your sperm count was really low. Don't say I had no sperm. It was non-existent. That's that, that's what he said. Though it was really low, like non-existent. It was zero. Uh, <laughs> but the, the funny thing is, I thought the funniest part about that was when he goes, "Well, you know, um, language barrier, dude. You learn to speak her language. You can speak to her. Stop that." <laughs> and like she's like, "We have Google, said, Google Translate. Translate. <laughs> Just Google Translate. Just just say." Ninos, <laughs> no. <laughs> Yo, did you notice this too? Everybody looked nervous as hell when they heard that she didn't tell him. Well, first of all, the fact that she thought she was pregnant and he said, oh, I have no sperm. But then also when she took six pregnancy tests, they all, and, and then when he wouldn't, he said like, she didn't tell me. So 
you see the look on their faces, and maybe it's just the producers again at work. But at one point, I'm going, did he ever think that maybe it was somebody else's that she cheated? Uh, because <laughs> I thought that. <laughs> I thought that. If, if I'm like, wait a minute, if I have zero sperm. <laughs> but remember, he did say he rectified it. He went and did some, went through a procedure to fix it. And, you know, he borrowed some sperm from somebody else. And those sperm, uh, pro, uh, you know, they, 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 they regenerated. Probably got some from John. Um, <laughs> John looks like an angry sperm, doesn't he? He's just like, I'm going to get in there. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but look. The funny thing was, I understood um, when he explained, like, no, that's just her, right? Like, she wants to be sure. If there's a slight chance that it's not going to happen, she doesn't want to jinx it. I'm like that when it comes to, to jobs and, and stuff like that. I don't talk about it or, or, or like, okay, well, this is going to happen. Because a lot of people talk shit into existence and it never happens. They talk as if they mm-hmm. already have it and it never happens. And I can I get working towards it because that's what you do. You work towards it. But... Don't go out. Just I've watched that happen to people. Oh yeah, I'm going to be this next version, and all of a sudden, no, it's not you. Now you got egg on your face, right? Yeah. So I understand, and at least he's understanding in that part of that's the way she is, and that's why she didn't talk about though. She wanted to go get the doctor to say, okay, I got six of these. I don't believe shit until you tell me. Yeah. Well, uh, I can relate. I can relate to that. But six pregnancy tests. How did he not even see him? Like I. I know I live alone, but I still look in my cabinets. I know no one's been here, but I just still every now and then I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> just in case anybody's squatting just in your house and you don't know about it yet. <laughs> I just, every now and then I just check. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's still had those two same towels in there. Yep. Nothing's changed. We're mm-hmm. good. But I just don't see how, how he missed that. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the conversation about Thais was trying to say Patrick was dating this other woman that he was training? You know, while while they were together, and yeah. everybody's like giving him hell for sleeping with two women. Well, we heard this story before because she brought that up a while back. Um, and, and matter of fact, in the very beginning. Now, once every and everybody else acted like they didn't know, but of course, this is in more detail because they only gave us a, 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 a little smidgen of it during the season. And once she gave more detail, like I'm sleeping with him and he's out here sleeping with this other girl and doing all this other stuff, come to find out he didn't sleep with her. So um, that makes it okay, right? No, <laughs> intent was still there. But notice how everybody all of a sudden went from looking concerned for, for Patrick to like, wait a minute now. And they're on Thais's side immediately. Well, this is the case that, and I'm not a religious person, but I do believe in divine intervention. <laughs> and maybe... The gods knew Patrick and Thais should be together. Mm-hmm. So whenever Patrick tried to get a little frisky with that girl, that's when he threw in a little bit of whiskey dick. <laughs> and was just like, you're, <laughs> you're not going to be performed. That last shot you're about to take, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. That's not going to make it work. But I don't think he was wrong. Because it sounds like what Patrick was saying is that we hadn't communicated that this is exclusive. I'm only with you and you're only with me. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And so if that's the case, eh, I don't see the big deal yeah. between I don't see he, I don't think he was wrong if they hadn't had the talk. The question becomes, did he have her believing and making sure she wasn't dating anybody else, have her believing because I, I you're right. Everybody at the stage acts as if they haven't dated more than one person at a time, right? If, people have dated more than one person at a time. But if you got to be honest, and that's the one thing you and I always talk about, we're always, we've always been honest with people that we dealt with, right? Like, no, you're not the only person. Oh, yes, you are the only person because you need to have that conversation. And if they, if he had her believing that she was the only one, then he's wrong. I mean, and he even said that he admitted that he was wrong. He just wanted to explain. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. But what had happened was <laughs> he's like, well, I didn't put it in because it didn't work. And I'm like. I have no idea what that means because alcohol does not have that effect on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm also uh, not an angry drunk, so. You're a sober asshole. That's what happened. That's what I give you. <laughs> you know, as we move on to uh, Bilal and Shaida, um, context is everything. Um, yeah, Bilal had some sayings for everything, didn't he? <laughs> yes. Words. Words mean things, Yanni. <laughs> words, words can give life. 
Words can be destructive. Sit down, class. Let me finish. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, how, 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 it's funny you said that, Bob. Sit down, class. Because then, of course, the student, Guillermo, was like, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. But then I love how Patrick comes in and is like, hey, He's a salesman. Bilal is a salesman, and I'm in awe of watching him work. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious because it's a hundred percent right. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, Bilal does come across this mm -hmm. way, and he is a total salesman and spends everything. I, I like how Patrick called that part where he was like, "Time out." Yes, and then takes control <laughs> of the conversation because that works. That works. You know, you ever been on a conference call and there's that one person's like, all right, everybody, let's pause for a second. We need to regroup. Yeah. The, now, all of a sudden, that person's in charge of the call. Yep. And it, it's a tactic that works very well. But he got called out for being a, a salesman. And I like how uh, I did agree with Bilal when he said that when he was pretty much calling Shai naive, not naive because she's not smart, but she's lived in a box. And I do think that's true with a lot of these. You take Kobe, where Kobe's coming from, he thinks that, you know, $4,000 is going to be enough to get him started here in Salina, Kansas. You know, Guillermo is just like, yeah, we're going to make it work. I'll find a job at some point. Everything's going to work out. It's like, no, it's a little bit different here. So I, I did agree with that, but also it's, like. How hold up. I would say this. Kobe. Let me, let me say this oh, real quick. Go ahead. It's not different here. It's the dream that's been sold about here. Because it's not like it back it, where they're from, like it doesn't happen. I mean, like she lived at home, yes. Now she was living outside. Home, so hers is a special case. She was she was really in the box, living at home with her parents. But you can find a job. But same thing here. People, but the dream that you're sold about the American dream is that you get a job, you can be a millionaire. Everybody's told that dream. Even people who were born here sold that dream. Okay. Well, we talked about this before during this dumb show. <laughs> is that Yes, there's the dream about coming to America, but you know what there also is? The internet, where you can find the truth about stuff in America. In other words, how much things cost, the cost of living in these particular places. What does rent look like? All these different things that they just seem to be naive about yes. that we all get. So no, not all. I call BS on that. And then for Shy, I mean, never paid a bill, nothing in her name. I'm like, mm. I get it. I like how she tried to shut up. Like, nope, not on national. You ain't got to say all that. <laughs> <laughs> but she, you know, so he did have a, he did have a good point there. Right. And that was another way of him turning the conversation around. Right. The same way, like Thais said to Patrick, like, well, you do it too. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, I try. Uh, <laughs> Obviously not as good as, as Bilal, which is why he's like, I'm in awe of this. Because you watch Bilal go through all this stuff and turn that turn that conversation around. Just like when he did that. Look at that. We turned the conversation based on what he said, based on Shaida being in a box. And he was absolutely right. That's a problem for her because she did not, she's not lived on her own. So that sense mm -hmm. of independence, yeah, she's got some independence, but not a lot. Because it's never in her name, no bills. Okay, I got to teach you this, but he did come off like he was talking to his child again. He he did. He does he does do that. Um, and I like how Kobe uh, called him out on the prank. Mm -hmm. He was like, "What I understand is this is a woman that you love and you want to marry, yet you portrayed her to be this gold right." And I'm like, "Yes, Kobe, mm -hmm. Cameroon." Hey, Kobe represent. was the Kobe was the adult. <laughs> In the first part of this tell-all, hopefully he remains that in part two. Because you you know how they like to set us up to put somebody on a pedestal and then knock that pedestal right up from yeah. one of them. Um, so hopefully he yeah. he remains that way. Because uh, it's like um, like Shaida said too. Was that you dishing it, but you can't take it? Because the whole thing about the slapping yeah. upside the head, and it's all in fun. Well, and the I, I like how they brought up the prenup mm -hmm. because I kept having that question to myself: is okay. If she put a clause in that he must try to make a baby and have a baby, what if you don't have a baby? Mm -hmm. Then what? So like, what's the what do you get if he reneges on the baby deal? Now he could try. What if he? What if he's like Patrick and he has zero <laughs> sperm left after the other two kids, and he doesn't tell you, and maybe he doesn't know. You know, then what? I think she wanted it in there for for. Um, 
a sense of, okay, at least try. Because he kind of just, eh, no. But then come to find out she had said she didn't want kids at first. And then all of a sudden now she changed her mind. Well, rule number one of dating a woman, she's going to change her mind. Okay? <laughs> Let's just get that clear. <laughs> she's going to change her mind at some point. On this, it's a bigger thing. But at the same time, it's going to happen. So I think she just wanted to put that in there because he wanted everything in his favor. Well, okay, here are two things I need. You know, I want a, I want a kid, so let's let's do this. By the time I'm 40. Now, if it happens or not, and I think they're on the next season of, I think, where are they now or whatever. And, you know, of course, they're going to go through their fertility and all that. And so, you know, that that's another, that's another season of something that they're going to be on. But the other part was... They're going to do another season of something? Bilal and Shai? 90 Day Fiance, else? Where Are They Now, I think, is what is the one that they're going to be on. Uh, yeah, um, hey, that's why they have 42 franchises, so you can move from one to the other. <laughs> it's crazy. Interesting thing about this, uh, though, is like, you know, that she put in the yoga studio. You got to help me build this yoga studio. I like it, because if, if you're going to keep all this other stuff and set it up so that, oh, you only get this much of the money, okay, cool. Help me build my own. Okay, but I'm curious what is I, I'm curious what the details of set up the yoga studio yeah. because he could easily go lease a space, mm -hmm. decorate it, hang a sign on the building. Mm -hmm. But is he responsible for marketing, getting people, and all that stuff? That should be her job. I'm, and I'm sure it is. I got you set up. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if you're able to get people to come in to want to do yoga with you. And like I said, I've lived in Kansas City. Mm. Don't know if there's a whole lot of yoga going well, on. Well, she's definitely trying to be. In, uh, she's also one of the other things she's doing based on this show is IG um, influencer, and I'm sure she's going to do some some virtual classes as well. Because why not? the The world is your playground. What do you think of when uh, Shaida <laughs> came out? Yo, I love the fact that first you could you could see the tension there between the two of them, but. She literally, everything that Shaida was complaining about all season, Shahida said, oh, yeah, he was like that all the way through. But then Shaida was like, yeah, but I'm older now, so I'm not just going to dip out on my marriage. <laughs> the sh I, yeah. She was like, I'm going to get you I'm for that kitchen I'm not just going to walk away. <laughs> yeah, I'm not just going to walk away. But, you know, I, I thought that was interesting because I keep messing up the names. Let's just say... Ex-wife, current wife. That's just easier for me. So the ex-wife is like, yeah, he was controlling. He did have this deal about being a neat freak. And when you have two small children, it's hard to live up yes. to that expectation. One, and two, she two. wasn't happy. And she chose her happiness Facts. and filed for divorce, which I respect Indeed. that. I think that's great because you don't want two kids to grow up seeing mom or dad being happy. And they think this is what married life should right. be like. So kudos to that. The problem is Bilal is still Bilal. He's not changing. And so I'm hoping that the current wife hears this and says, you know what? This is what I chose to put up with because I knew going in he was this mm -hmm. way. You know, I think he evolved over that period with ex-wife. You know, she didn't walk into that situation because she lived in that shitty old mm -hmm. house that he grew up in. And so she started, she was hit with him from the bottom and saw him grow. But current wife has to understand that he's not going to mm -hmm. change. So... This is what you've signed up for. Yeah. I will say this, though. We'll go with this. You'll say ex-wife, current wife. Ex-wife, you brought up the old house. She still felt the way. I felt so bad for him because, you know, she kind of shitted on the house that we actually lived in for two years. Well, great. I guarantee you when you lived in it for two years, it was also put together a little bit better than, than the grandma curtains and everything else that was in there that it didn't look lived in. It didn't look lived. The roof was peeling. And it, yeah, I mean, granted, you're in the house, you're living in there. You don't notice the roof peeling as much. And at the same time, it's beneath what she was living in before. So in Trinidad, so why are you mad at her for that? This man went over there with designer luggage and watches and all that stuff. If that's what you portray first, you better live up to it when, when they come to you later. I agree with that 100%. So I totally understand where she's coming from. But for ex-wife to feel some type of way about someone making fun of the place she used to live in. I had an apartment where my living room furniture was wicker. Wicker. Patio furniture was my living room furniture, and I was content. Now, looking back on it, I would make fun yeah. of myself for living like that. I'm not going to be someone that's like, I can't, you know, 
that's just what Terrell grew up and they got to understand. No, <laughs> I knew I was broke living in that. And I had dreams to get to something better. So ex-wife can't be, you know, feeling judged or feeling some type of way because someone's looking at the house she used exactly. to live in. She wouldn't move in there yeah, now. Y'all moved the hell out of there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, and you got out of there for a reason. But I love I love Jabri. Jabri was just like, look, I can cut the tension in here with a knife. Y'all are hurt. Y'all are dealing with this stuff. I was like, get him, Jabri. It's like, y'all are hurt. She's trying to be open. You trying to be open. Y'all ain't talking to each other. That's the problem. I was like, I like Jabri. Now I know ex-wife is also a new wife, just somebody else. But... Am I the only one that's picking up a little vibe that she still is super protective of Bilal, almost like she's acting like she still wants him, even though she doesn't want to be married to him? No, I don't think she doesn't want him. She's looking out for her two children and their mm -hmm. assets. And I don't know what current, you know, what ex-wife's current husband mm -hmm. has, but she's she's pretty well probably taken care of through Bilal's investments and all that. And so her kids mm -hmm. are taken care of, which is why she called out current wife for not having any assets and she's like you don't know me she's like you live at home with your parents <laughs> you don't have a car you don't own a house now maybe current wife invests in a lot of stocks exactly you know no. stuff. who knows maybe who knows you know the thing about it is it's it's not only about the assets that you have prior to but also what you do throughout it because correct me if i'm wrong all of the stuff he owned before she doesn't get it's about what they what they get um, what what he builds moving forward. And I get it. He's got his base. Um, but at the same time, still, ex-wife shouldn't be worried about the prenup and discussing it with current wife because that's the conversation she had, she should have with Bilal. And that's where it ends. Well, agree. But then didn't you say that even if their relationship doesn't work out because he sponsored her, he's still financially responsible for her? Yeah, for 10 years, yeah. So then that also impacts her children. He better fix the problems he has and learn how to, to actually keep a wife this time. <laughs> well, is, wait, wait, hold on. I, to Bilal's credit, it's not that he didn't keep her. She left. Mm. So what do you do if you want everything to, to work out, but she still wants to leave? You can't make her stay just because no, she's not as clean as you need her to be. Yeah, well, they're two kids that she's at home with. You're out. You have no idea what's... The, look, if you ever think the mother of your child is doing absolutely nothing, you stay at home with those rugrats for a little while. Watch what happens. You change your mind, I guarantee you. <laughs> okay, but those kids have been in school and all that ever since... They didn't divorce just while the, the youngest was starting kindergarten. I mean, they okay. divorced some time after while they were in school. So they moved to the nice house. He's out selling houses. She takes the kids to school. She goes to the mosque. They do voodoo and whatever else that you do. She has time <laughs> to help or teach the kids to be as clean, which I don't know. That's probably not an easy you know task, what? but <laughs> I am not even going to edit this out. I'm going to let the women chew you up in the comments. <laughs> Get them. <laughs> uh, I kid, I kid. <laughs> it's too late. They've already started typing. <laughs> they paused the video and they've already started typing. <laughs> but we're going to keep moving. <laughs> Even Muhammad. Um, why when they first pulled up, is Eve still complaining about being the sole provider? You knew this. And this is what the man was saying from the very beginning. I need to get to work. Why are you complaining? Because misery likes company. You know, you like to have other people you can complain to stuff about. And mm -hmm. that's what her, Patrick, and Kara did in the beginning when everybody's getting set up, just whining about having to take care of the person. This is what you mm -hmm. signed up for. You know, so you can't really be, you can't be that upset about it. So I agree. I I, I, th I do think towards the end of the siege, because remember how Muhammad, we didn't like him. And at the end, I mean, I'm still not a big fan, but right. he turned out to be better than what we thought. I was waiting for someone to bring up the age gap and like really talk right. about the and the fact that Eve was talking about wanting to have kids. It's like you're 48. He's 24. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, nobody brought that up. Um, the interesting thing was, I thought this was when Jabri really started kicking some knowledge, right? When when Kara's like, oh well, you know, but you're this and she goes, wait a minute, have you ever been to Egypt? I have. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then even when Eve say, yeah, but it's a double standard. And Jabri's reply was, well, that's how it is in his country. The one thing he left off was, and you went there, so you should know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally respect the fact that he brought that up because that's true. You know, in Egypt, they don't walk around looking like that. And then the areas that you do do that, those are like resorts. Mm-hmm. Totally different ball game. And yes, it is a double standard in Egypt that men can do pretty much whatever the hell they want and the women can't. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's a double standard there. So now I do think that Muhammad has lightened up and changed the more that he's been yes. in the U.S. And it took time to adapt. And I think Jabri gave him props for adapting. But I, I thought, I'm looking at Shy. I'm like, why are you going to limp into this conversation with your bullshit joke? You know, Shy said, a blind man with spectacles could have seen this happen. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, why would a blind man have spectacles? Is that something they say in Trinidad? Is that a <laughs> leave it? A, stop it. Leave it alone. <laughs> she messed up the saying that she was trying to get to, and they were like, "Oh yeah, we gonna leave that shit." Out. <laughs> that shit was too good not to leave it. Yeah. <laughs> this is why your professor talks to you like this because you sound dumb, <laughs> Professor Husband. <laughs> But I do like that she was like, well, what did you expect? Because she's, and this is the question that you and I had as well. Eve, what did you expect? This man has done nothing but tell you, this is who I am. This is what I believe in. Take it or leave it. He's told you that. Mm -hmm. Now, granted that he's finally come around and and started, you know, his mom had to tell him, of course, because that's who he listens to, um, that kind of told him, look, you're in her country now. You need to ease up a little bit. Don't be the asshole that we know you are. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get over that. And <laughs> Miona, that, I think Miona, that's the only time she spoke up was to Muhammad about asking, do you want Eve to be, become a Muslim? Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, that needs to be on her. If she wants to. Great. But I'm not going to force her to do that. And I'm like, OK, good, because it almost seemed like he was trying to. It did. did highly, it was a great force question. Her, let's just answer. say highly encourage her to right. become a Muslim throughout most of the show. It was a great question and a great answer because the fact yeah. that she asked that I thought was great. And then his response, I thought he was going to say yes, to be quite honest. Like, yes, that would be that would be perfect. But the fact that he was like, no, it's got to be something she wants to do. Right. Agree with that. Agree with that. See, Miona's actually smarter than we give her credit for. Mm hmm. But and smart enough to know, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let y'all let y'all keep believing that I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, um, Cara and Guillermo, um, I thought this was a very troubling statement in the very beginning when they first arrived. She goes, we're good today. Not every day is a good day, but today is a good day. To me, that that was kind of, it should be alarming. Or am I overreacting here? No, I think that is the, that's the one negative thing that I don't understand about married couples. And when people first get married, how is it? Well, you know, it's it's not all that great some days, but some days it's good. I mean, if you were like, hey, Terrell, have you heard of such and such restaurant? No, Yanni, how is it? Well, you know, some days, <laughs> you know, the food's really good. And some days I get food poisoning and I throw up. But I mean, you know, you do the best you can. It's like, why would you just say that? If you're married, just <laughs> fake it and say you're happy. Don't tell, because I mean, you, it doesn't, a lot of married people don't make marriage exciting. Mm -hmm. That's just from a single person's perspective. It doesn't sound exciting when that's the first thing out of people's mouth. How is it? Well, you know, today's a good day. (laughs) It's like you're you're making marriage sound like you have IBS. Well, today's a good day. I'm good. (laughs) We'll see what happens tomorrow. (laughs) You're right. Because a lot of people have given, you know, like, oh, you have married married couples, especially married men who are like, stay single as long as you can, my boy. You know, like, (laughs) (laughs) No, trust me, I was single for that long just because I hadn't, I hadn't met my wife yet. <laughs> when, when you meet the one and you know, you know, and that's what it is. And the fa- if, if, if you're going backpedaling into, into marriage, then you, you probably shouldn't get married. Let's, let's be real. If this is going to be Great. what you say when somebody says, how's it going? Well, oh, we're good today. Not every day's a good day. But today's a good day. That means you have a, at least 50-50 good and bad days. And that's not a good Percentage. That's not a good marriage. If it's 50-50, well, it, does today end in Y? 
Okay, well, it's not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's okay to have bad moments, but to have right. bad days, I mean, and not even right. a bad day, but bad days is what it said. It just, it came off, yo, mm-mm. Couldn't be I me. agree. <laughs> um, I agree. Now, I do think that, A, congratulations to them on the baby. Indeed. Um, I think that's exciting. But did she just call Guillermo a naive child, like, to his face? Oh, multiple times. Yes, to his <laughs> face, like a naive child. And he's just sitting there just like, hmm. Like, I, Guillermo's better than me. He took a whole lot on the chin in this uh, in this couple's tell-all. Yeah, I, he really did, because she is so de- demeaning and unapologetic about it. And I love the fact that other all the other couples came to his defense and trying to explain to her, like, yo, you come off like a... You really come off very demeaning, very condescending, and they kept drilling that home. And Shaida even made a good point saying, it's all Americans that feel like they're the parent in the relationship. <laughs> and she's right. And now granted, to your point, they're all paying for everything. But still, if exactly. you're looking for a spouse, you don't treat your spouse, your potential spouse, like a fucking child. Yeah, well, and and you had Patrick call it out and say American women are controlling, and I was just like, mm, interesting. Well, get him. Sean cleaned it up and said, so Patrick just said that all the American women on the show, <laughs> she cleaned it up for him, and she tried to clean it up. Uh, and I don't know whether he kind of said that a little bit after, but the fact that she said that. He's not wrong. All the American women on the show were very demeaning, yeah. very condescending, and acting like the. I called it out many times. This is not your slave. Yeah, Emily. Well, <laughs> Kobe said it. Kobe said it right. That tone is everything. Mm, yes, it's I love the that tone of voice. Yes, it's the tone of voice in what she's saying is the difference maker here. So that quote uh, is amazing. Ninety percent of the problems. Yeah. In the world is not the difference of opinion, but the tone used. And it, again, Kobe was the adult in the room in this one. Uh, you know, I thought that was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about rapper Chris coming back? The Amish rapper? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a young Weird Al. That's what he looked like today. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I initially called him Vanilla Splice until they decided to give him another name. But why they? Why the hell are we still talking to this high school ex boyfriend? And he's acting as if, right. well, you know, I know her better than anything. And <laughs> so you're messy. still in high school. That's apparently. what I put. He's, he's messy AF is what I put in my notes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was. I, I didn't understand that, and it's been so long ago that I'm like, Chris, get you some counseling, get therapy. Mm-hmm. And move on with your life. But why are you doing this? And then they even say that you don't think Guillermo's man enough to handle her. And I, again, I commend Guillermo for being the adult mm-hmm. and even encouraging Kara. Hey, you should apologize to him. Yes. Her. Obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, but it was just a mess. And then thank goodness for Jabri <laughs> jumping in and just like leave Ozzy Osbourne in the. <laughs> you got James Bond. Leave Ozzy Osbourne. You got James Bond. And dude, go- to your point, Jabri even said, dude, get over it. You got to find a woman and trust her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, you see, this is what I like about Guillermo. Guillermo sat there, took all that bullshit that, that Carl was giving him, took all that bullshit that Chris was giving him. And, well, you know, I mean, what about after he said, you know, well, thank you for, tell, for, for, for telling him to apologize. Because, oh, you know, I mean, what do I know? I'm a, I'm a toddler at the end of the day. You know, I'm, I'm not really much of a man. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. He won with that line at the end, like let Chris go on and act like the jackass that he is, the the high school freshman that he still is. And Guillermo showed, I may be younger, but I'm actually the adult in the room. Yes, exactly. And I think that Kira has probably seen that about Guillermo and it's probably helped her mature. He's probably that balance that she needed. Yeah, because she really acts like he's that much younger than her and... But she's like, well, you know, we all like young sometimes. Yes, when you get alcohol in your system, you don't know how to act. Guillermo made that right. quite clear. <laughs> <laughs> Not only Guillermo, the cameras made it clear. We saw you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny because here we are back with the uh, the throuple 
Patrick, Thais, and John. And speaking of toddlers, John came in like a toddler. I mean, you know, you're, uh, how are you going to come up and just tell other people about your brother's, his brother, your brother and his wife's pregnancy? You don't do that until they do it. True, that's the rule, but it's John. He he screwed up. Okay, it's John. But no matter what, no matter what, Thais is not going to like John, mm -hmm. period. For whatever reason, I don't understand why she hates him so much. And for John, I think he only acts this way towards her because he knows it pisses her off. But I just don't, I don't understand why she's so angry at John. That's because John is still a teenager. John and Chris are the same person. They're just different accents. <laughs> He's still a teenager. But I mean, still, John's not doing anything. Originally, John wasn't doing anything bad. She just doesn't like him. Yeah. And so for her to like judge him about having a beer in the morning, he's like, I can do what I want. I live here too. Well, that's on Patrick for not telling until she got there that John is living in the house with her, with them, and that he's still going to be living there. I mean, at the end of the day, you're coming to, to live your life with, with who's supposed to be your spouse for life. And they've got a third wheel in the house. Yeah. John needs to go get, um, to go get somebody. And that's why him and Jabri bump heads and, <laughs> That that was hilarious. I love it. He was like, "Look here, sparkles." <laughs> <laughs> and see, I love that. John is the guy. He's the instigator. Once he finds that he a nerve that he can touch on, so he, me, you, and John can hang out because we'll all do the same thing: find that nerve on somebody and push it. And we could do it to each other mm -hmm. and be fine. Yes, and talk trash to each other and be cool. I would totally have beers with John. Um, and John even said, it's like, I'm the kind of person that you, you come at me, I'm going to come at you. I just, that's just who I am. Yep. Um, but I thought it was a little hypocritical for John to be going after Jabri saying, you still live with your parents? You still live with your parents? I'm like, do you still live with your brother? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Jabri said, you're lonely at home drinking six packs and playing video games. <laughs> See? Told you. The ladies, red flag. If a man sitting at home playing video games all night by himself, red flag. <laughs> or oh, he's staying out of trouble. <laughs> well, regardless, Jabri was right. You're at home. You're lonely. because I feel sorry for you. You need to move on. So look at your brother and look at his wife. They're happy. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> you know what? John is the brother, the uncle that will never be left with the kid. <laughs> That's why they moved to Vegas, so that if they want to go out for, for uh, a night on the town, they can, because the other brother will at least show some responsibility and take care of the child. John will have the child doing, um, you know, uh, cake stands. <laughs> <laughs> go, go make Uncle John another old-fashioned and, and do it right like I showed you last time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Look, two parts to this tell-all. Of course, we're back next week with part two. When, of course, we'll jump into a lot more about Emily and Kobe. It's going to be interesting to hear what they have to say and see if Kobe can still be uh, keep being the adult in the room. Because <laughs> he was that today. Yeah, well, I I'm curious to see what part two is going to do. But I'm actually more excited that after part two, after next Sunday, done. <laughs> I knew that would get you excited. excited about that. See, there you go. Excited about that. I got one more. Mm -hmm. One more. Until they have. <laughs> Next week, where are they now? <laughs> are you serious? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. I was about to say no. <laughs> no. The look on your face, it just went from smiles to, you got to be shitting me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, I'm Yanni Root. And I'm just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts or some of the bullshit you find on the internet. We'll talk about it on the regular show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.